In this video, I'm going to be talking about modeling with statics and I'm going to go through two examples. These are the types of questions that are worth quite a lot of marks in exams. Uh, the second example I'm going to go through is worth uh, 17 marks. And this is a good example of a question you might see in an exam. Uh, so it's a good topic to be confident with. Within those marks, there are a lot of easy marks you can pick up without even getting the question right. So by revising this topic, you can pick up potentially five or six marks out of a 10 mark question just by using the correct method. Now this topic brings together a lot of different aspects of uh, A-level mechanics. So you need to understand resolving forces, which is a year 13 topic. Resolving forces. The second example, uh, there'll be aspects of moments. So you need to be confident with that and also friction. So these are three fairly big topics in A-level mechanics. This problem here, however, is, is mostly about resolving forces. So let's get stuck into this question then. This question is from practice paper I from the Edexcel practice papers. And it says figure five shows a cylindrical object with mass eight kilograms resting on two cylindrical bars of equal radius. The lines connecting the center of each of the bars to the center of the object make an angle of 40 degrees to the vertical. Part A says draw a diagram showing all of the forces acting on the object. Describe each, each of the forces using words. So for part A, we need to draw a force diagram. This is something you learn to do in year 12. So draw your circle. Sometimes it might say draw the forces on the diagram, but here they're telling us to draw our own separate diagram. We have the center of the cylinder. We will have a weight coming from the center of the cylinder, and that would be mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration. They don't tell us to indicate the value of the forces. They say describe the forces with words. So we just need to write weight there. And then we have the normal reaction forces uh, pushing back on the cylinder from these rods. Okay, so we have these two normal reaction forces. And, um, well, I should have made it a bit bigger, but we need to write normal reaction and normal reaction here as well. Are there any other forces we need to consider? Well, you might think possibly there's friction, right? Because, uh, you know, we have a rod and it's, you know, this cylinder might want to move somehow. So there might be friction between the rod and the cylinder. Uh, but actually, if you think about it, this cylinder has no tendency to move. The only way it will move is if these rods collapse. Um, it's not made of jelly. We're assuming it's a solid cylinder, so it's not going to slip through this gap. Uh, it's either going to be held up by the rods or fall to the ground when the rods uh, give way. Uh, so there's no friction here. The cylinder has no tendency to move anywhere. And we don't need to consider the weight of the rods or anything because they're, they're obviously fixed into a wall or something. They're fixed in place. Uh, so the weight of the rods has no bearing on this question. So these are the only forces we need to consider here. Okay, so that's part A. Part B says calculate the magnitude of the force on each of the bars due to the cylindrical object. For this question, we can actually model this as a static particle because if we think about what's happening in this situation, we have the weight force pulling from the center. And because this is a solid cylinder, the normal reaction force we can model as acting on the center of this cylinder. Uh, we don't need to consider, you know, if the cylinder's bending or anything. Uh, the force on where the rods touch the cylinder, we can assume is the same as at the center. So we can actually model this as a static particle. Uh, so we could draw a diagram with the center of the cylinder as the particle. We have the normal reaction forces uh, at angles to that, and we have the weight force pulling down like so. And uh, we could, well, we know the angle uh, of these vectors. So if we drew a, a vertical line then we know these angles are 40 degrees to the vertical. And also we know the weight, which is eight kilograms. We told that in the question multiplied by G newtons. And the other thing is we know this is in equilibrium. It's not, the word equilibrium is not used in the question, but this word resting is. So resting implies equilibrium. 
uh, if something is at rest, it's not moving. So nothing's moving. Uh, we can assume equilibrium. So therefore, uh, we can say that if we resolve these forces vertically, this is where the resolving forces understanding comes in. If we resolve these forces vertically, uh, then it should equal zero. Um, so we can say resolving vertically, taking up to be positive, then these two forces need to equal the weight pulling down. So we take the vertical aspect of these forces. If we call these normal reaction forces R, these two reaction forces will be the same, by the way, because it's the same weight pushing against each rod. Um, so it's just the one cylinder pushing against each rod. So it's the same reaction force pushing back against the cylinder. And then the vertical aspect of those will be R cosine 40. So then we can say R cosine 40, the vertical aspect of this force, reaction force, plus R cosine 40, the vertical aspect of that reaction force, subtract the weight pulling down, so 8G, this equals zero because the cylinder is at rest. And this allows you to solve for R, which is the magnitude of the force on each bar. So solving this for R, we have two lots of R cosine 40, so 2R cosine 40, equals 8G, sorry for the mess, and then R equals 8G on uh, 2 cosine 40. And then we just need to calculate this. If you put that into a calculator, you get approximately 51.17 Newtons. Okay, so there we go. That is an example of a uh, modeling with statics question where we can effectively model it as a static particle. Okay, on to the next question. This is from practice paper K. Along with understanding resolving forces, you also need to understand moments and friction for this question. This is a very common uh, type of question that will come up in A-levels where there's a ladder leaning against a wall or some other you know, uniform rod leaning against some objects. Uh, so it's a good problem to practice. This question says a 10 meter long uniform ladder has a mass six kilograms and makes an angle of 20 degrees with a smooth vertical wall. It stands on a rough horizontal ground uh, floor, which has coefficient of friction 0.3 with the bottom of the ladder. Part A says draw a diagram showing all the forces acting on the ladder describe the origin of each force using words. So starting off with our understanding of force diagrams. Well, firstly, we have the weight at the center of the ladder because it's a uniform ladder, so we can describe that as weight. Then we have a friction force. I would argue it's not particularly important which way you draw this vector in these types of examples, but I think it's fairly intuitive to draw it pointing towards the wall, because what is this ladder likely to do? It's likely to slip out this way. So friction is always in opposition to the direction of movement, so it's intuitive to draw friction pointing towards the wall. Um, so friction we have, and then we also have a normal reaction pushing back from the ground. So this we could call normal reaction. And you could leave that as that, or you could say normal reaction from the ground or from the floor. And then we also have a normal reaction pushing from the wall because the ladder is also pushing against the wall. So we have a normal reaction from the wall. That is all of the forces we need to consider. Okay, so four marks there, I guess, for each one and labeled correctly. Part B is surprisingly worth 13 marks. It says calculate the magnitude of each force and hence determine whether or not the ladder slips. Okay, so there's going to be a bit of work here. Where I suggest you start is with the forces you know. We know what the weight should be because we're given the mass. And so the weight will just be the mass times the gravitational acceleration. And that also allows us to find the normal reaction from the floor uh, because they're the only two forces acting vertically. So we're going to start by resolving vertically. Um, and we can say the weight... Uh, sorry, the normal reaction force from the floor, and I might label this R1. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you label them, but just for my notation, I'm going to say R1, which is 
pushing up from the floor, subtract the weight, which is 6 times g, equals 0. Because this ladder is not moving up or down, um, it's only going to move sideways. So in terms of its vertical movement, it's in equilibrium. So then we can say R1 equals 6g. Okay, and then we can get a, a number for that. So 6 times 9.8, if you put that into a calculator, you get 58.8. Newtons. So that's the normal reaction force pushing up from the floor. Then we have two other forces we want to figure out. We have friction, we don't know, and we have the normal reaction from the wall, we don't know. So how are we going to figure these out? Well, for the normal reaction from the wall, we can use moments around the point where the ladder touches the ground, because then we'll only have one variable. Uh, to find the moments about this point, uh, we'll have the perpendicular aspect of the weight with the ladder and we'll have a perpendicular aspect of this normal force from the wall and that will only have one variable that we don't know. So we're going to use moments to work out this force. So we can say moments where the ladder touches the ground and I might label this normal reaction force R2 and these two things should be equal because this is the only force pushing against the wall, so we must have an equal force pushing back against the ladder from the wall. So if we take the moments around the point on the ground, they should be equal. So for this force here, this is going to be uh, 6g sine 20, because this angle in here would be 20 degrees. You could also do cosine of 70, because that angle is 70, but it's the same as sine 20. So cosine 70 or sine 20 will be fine there. And then this angle up here, that's also 20 degrees. So this will be R2 cosine 20. Okay, so they need to be equal. Also, we need to multiply them by the distance from where they are on the ladder to the ground. We know the length of the ladder is 10 meters long. So this one uh, from the middle of the ladder to the ground is five meters. So we multiply that by five, five times six G sine 20. That needs to equal uh, 10 times R2 cosine 20 or R2 times 10 cosine 20. This will allow us to find R2 or the normal reaction from the wall. So R2 is equal to uh, 30 G sine 20 over 10 cosine 20. If you put that into a calculator using g as 9.8, you get approximately 10.7 newtons. So that is the normal reaction from the wall. So we have the normal reaction force from the floor, we have the normal reaction force from the wall, we have this final friction force that we need to figure out. Before we work out what the friction is in this situation, we can work out the maximum friction. Uh, now F max the maximum friction we could have is equal to mu times the normal reaction force from the floor. So the, the force pushing up from the floor on the ladder multiplied by the coefficient of friction. So we have this, we work that out to be 58.8. So we can work out the maximum friction possible will be 0.3 multiplied by 58.8. So calculating that, we get 17.64 newtons. And now we can work out uh, what the friction is in this situation by resolving horizontally because there are only two forces acting on this ladder horizontally. It's the force from the wall and friction opposing that. And so if we resolve horizontally, taking right to be positive, the, you know, the potential direction of movement, we can see that friction will actually equal this normal reaction force from the wall uh, because it's less than the maximum friction. Uh, so friction will be able to hold this ladder in place. So we could say F equals R2. So it equals 10.7 Newtons. And again, that's less than the maximum friction possible. Uh, okay, so then we can say F max is larger than F, the friction in this situation, and therefore the ladder, the ladder will not slip. Okay, let's talk about the marks you can pick up here. 
uh, even if you're not completely confident of answering these types of questions. Uh, firstly, if you're given a uh, a statics question like this with a rigid body, that's what we call these ladders or rods, it's a rigid body, uh, you're likely going to be resolving things vertically. Uh, so think about the forces acting on the, on the rigid body or the particle or whatever it is, and then see if you can create an equation by resolving vertically or horizontally. Just by trying to do that, by resolving vertically, even stating that, you get one or two marks. Then if you can create an accurate an equation, that's another mark. So that would be my first step, trying to resolve things either vertically or horizontally. Then uh, for these types of questions, you're likely going to want to take moments around a certain point. Uh, now it's fairly important that you pick a correct point. In this example, because we wanted to find this force, the normal reaction from the wall, we already knew the weight. That means we wanted to take moments around the point where the ladder touches the ground because it eliminates this force here. So that gives you an equation with one variable that you can solve. So think about where you want to take moments around to solve for that variable. There are some more marks there, two or three marks just for doing that process. So already if you do, you know, two of these things, you've picked up potentially half of the marks of that question uh, without even getting to the final answer. Uh, then uh, again, for these types of questions, you're likely going to have to consider friction. Think about how you can figure out what friction is. In this example, we were resolving horizontally. It might not always be the case, but uh, it's a fairly good bet that you will likely in these types of questions resolve vertically and horizontally. Uh, that allowed us to find the friction in this example. We had to compare that with the maximum friction possible. And then eventually we could uh, summarize it with our answer. There is a process to these types of questions. Going back to the first question again, uh, you know, that was uh, resolving forces for a static particle. Uh, you kind of had to sort of figure out that even though it, it's slightly complicated because it's a cylinder resting on two rods, it's effectively a static particles question. Um, and then you can sort of draw this diagram. You don't really need to draw this diagram. You can also think of it as a triangle where all the forces are equal because the uh, cylinder is resting. That implies equilibrium. Um, and there's a process there as well by resolving vertically. So by understanding that method, there's lots of marks you can pick up in these types of questions. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'll try to do some more videos over the weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.